made it back safe and sound with the tar y'all welcome back to the channel i hope you enjoyed watching that series that was the craziest thing i've ever done and i just feel like a much stronger person I, i'm i'm so glad all that happened and i'm glad that we got down safely and everything but now we get to really just enjoy tell stories uh, enjoy the meat and just have a good time and reflect so uh, I've got my tar right here so this is my tar skull and cape that's in there it's what I carried down the mountain um, so these <clears throat> these horns actually measure out a little over 13 inches a little over 13 and a half uh, I think the other one's 13 and three quarters so uh, it's a really nice tar uh, old bull tar and uh, we've got some of the some of the meat that's inside now Wendy who's been with us this whole time um, JT met uh, Wendy and Todd on a, a moose hunt, and uh, Wendy uh, is the cook at camp. Um, she keeps the spirits high. Wendy's awesome. I love Wendy. So uh, she is going to cook up some of this tar, and we're going to taste the flavors. So let's go inside, see how we cook up some tar, and see how it tastes. Now, I will tell you right off the bat, goats usually stink a little bit, and this one definitely did. Big bull just how you would imagine when we came up on it, it had like a, a real musky smell. So I'm wondering what the meat is gonna taste like, but uh, man, it's just gonna be good to have some good protein after eating like, you know, dehydrated meals this whole time. So let's go see how to cook it up and let's give it a taste. What do you think about tar meat? Not bad. <clears throat> we probably need something more for your video than that. <laughs> <laughs> Skillet, a little bit of seasoning, a little grease. Simple mountain style. Yep. The key is to get all the sinew off. That's what the chewy stuff is. The sinew, that's basically the fat. Yeah, well that's, that's kind of yeah, a layer of like that silver skin they call it. Yeah, that gives it the gamey taste. Yeah, well it just makes it chewy as like rubber. So. The more you get these, you can like fillet it off almost. But yeah, it's just gets really. Look at that. There's hardly any fat. No, it's pretty. They're a pretty lean animal. So they got an okay flavor, but paste to put a little seasoning on them. Definitely got to get all that silver skin off. That's five thousand foot meat right there. <laughs> A little tough being a nine-year-old bull, but with enough seasoning, we should uh, should be able to make it taste pretty good. Do you count rings on a tar like you do sheep? sheep? Yeah. Yep. I want you to show me how to do that. It's like a tree. Yep. Okay, we're throwing on a couple different seasonings. What do you got here, Dottie? Got a little garlic and a herb, and then uh, just a, a steak seasoning. So. Like a, just a general kind yeah. of steak mix. Not sure what's in it, but yeah, I'm sure it'll taste pretty good. So a couple different flavors here, little tar samplings. Yeah, these, these little back straps. Got a little breakfast skillet to go along with it. <sighs> We've been eating dehydrated <laughs> meals for so many days. I think it's gonna be pretty tasty. JT, what did you? What's your? Uh, what are your thoughts about what happened yesterday? Mm, I was just glad y'all made it back. Um, you know, I was up there by myself here across from, from camp. I wasn't nearly as far as y'all. I was about a two and a half hour hike back down and I saw the rain coming and messaged Wendy and the warden and they kind of both agreed after the waterfalls that were up there where I was the day before, like that I should probably head down. So I made it back down in I think two and a half hours, two hours, something like that. And so I, I got here before the real, real bad stuff hit, and I was just uh, glad y'all made it back, honestly. <laughs> yeah, you had good timing. Yeah. You were smart. Me and Todd, we tried to get out of there as soon as possible. Like it was, yeah. We did, but... I didn't have a tar on the ground to, to deal with, so... <laughs> I think we actually, it wasn't, we, uh, we caped it out kind of quickly. It was just like that initial descent back to the tents took two hours. 
And that's where I thought I was, my legs were gonna die. I got a solid one day of bow hunting in this trip. 11 day trip, got one day of bow hunting. <laughs> I yeah. had a bull tar at 100 and 125, 130 yards though, so if I was gun hunting, I could have killed one, but. What do you think about New Zealand hunting? I've learned a lot. Yeah, I have too. I've learned a lot about my equipment. I've always been a long axle to axle bow guy, but after this trip, uh, you definitely need a shorter bow for a steep, steep mountain hunt like this. Just when it's strapped to your pack, it's more compact. You won't hit it on as much stuff, won't get hung as much. So I definitely have to reevaluate my equipment when I get home. Going to the time. skillet. We got a little lard in there. Yeah, a little grease, yep. It's pretty dark in here, y'all, but that's what we've been dealing with. There's one little light that runs on solar right there. The rest is just headlamps. It smells pretty good. It doesn't smell tar-like. It doesn't smell like that gamey, musty, you know, big old male goat smell. A lot like mountain goat, I mean, just a little bit tougher. How would you describe a tar to everybody? Like the animal itself. Oh, tar, he's, he's, um, he's like a, the gorilla of the mountain. Uh, cross, like a gorilla, cross with a bulldog, cross with a grizzly bear, slash lion. <laughs> he's got a front end on him like a bulldog, but. A mythical yeah, creature. A mythical creature, he's got the swagger of a grizzly bear. Basically tired of the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Toughest son of a gun I've ever met right there. I don't know if it's all Kiwis or it's just Todd, but... All in these mountains, you kind of... Get used to it? Get used to it. But I've definitely been softened over the last few years. Had it pretty easy in North America. So, yeah, you're in BC I now, right? reality shock. Yeah. Give a little flip. Yeah, flip her over. Oh, yeah. This was kind of pushing to get this many days. Because, you know, we're just going to have to get lucky and get like five days of good weather. But yeah, but that's the thing is this. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Cheers, Donnie. It's a lot of kids. It's ours. <laughs> Flavor's really good. It is amazing. Chewy, but there's not that mm, stank. The wild game, this had a really good flavor, like some of the best flavor I've had. Yeah, honestly, I've had deer that are more game than that. Mm -hmm. Then you say if you shoot a female, it's a lot less chewy than mm -hmm. one. Yeah, that's a nine year old bull, so. Probably like your moose. He spends mm -hmm. a bit of time on the hill, running around. Cooked to medium rare. Have a couple Ooh, fresh pieces. Another fresh piece. You guys, this is just like straight off the mountain. There's no tenderizing or anything. Old bull tar. Tom's saying that the younger ones are actually like some of the best eating in New Zealand. As far as wild game goes, I heard the kiwi is pretty good too. <laughs> you want to get your ass to pull it? Just kidding. Where's Impressions of the tar meat, y'all. I'm so surprised that it was that good. I mean, it was chewy. Don't get me wrong, it was really chewy. But for any kind of old animal, it's gonna be a little chewy, especially since you know I shot it uh, that evening and then you know it basically bedded down all night, so it probably tensed up. I don't know. I, I kind of tend to think that when animals don't die like instantly right away, that their meat will tense up a little bit. That's just kind of theory, a theory I have about deer. But speaking of that, I've had white-tailed deer that are more gamey tasting than that tar. So that took me by complete surprise. I could see how a, a tar nanny, which is their female 
smaller tar, you know, especially a young one, would be absolutely delicious. Marinate this meat and it's gonna be really, really good. But what we had on the table besides me and Chewy was awesome, y'all. Especially just after everything that we've been through, refueling with some protein, incredible. So uh, the rest of this meat right here, this is one little back strap we're gonna give to uh, uh, the warden and um, any of the other campers up here it's actually cold enough we're going to preserve it so he, the warden's going to let everyone know if they want some fresh tar steaks this cabin here is uh is managed by a warden and they rotate like every nine days they'll hike in here uh, about seven miles or so and then they'll kind of check on the other camps that are about three or four little satellite camps around here and it's their job to you know, make sure the place doesn't burn down, keep coal up here, like it's their job to manage it basically. Uh, and we had a really nice warden staying here while we were here and uh, we just want to thank him by giving him some of this meat as well. So I'm sure he's going to enjoy it. One last piece of work we got to do, we got to finish caping the face of the tar, uh, which is basically so that I can take it back to the taxidermis and we're going to skull cap it. So you don't need the whole skull when you're doing a, a mount you know, so any kind of deer or anything, you just take the little top skull portion and it's especially good because we don't have to carry that whole extra weight. That head itself is probably 10 pounds. Uh, the entire animal I think was probably between 225, 250 uh, in weight. It's, they're just so much bigger than I thought they were because the whole time I was looking at them from so far away and finally walking up on it, it's like, this is a massive animal that's, it's like Todd said, a mix between like a bulldog, gorilla, and a goat. Like it's just such a crazy mythical looking creature. So we're gonna take our time with caving, make sure we do a really good job. I want this mount to be as good as it can be. I, every time I look at this tar, I'm just gonna think of the experience, the adventure uh, that has taken place here. So let's get over there and let's finish caping out. Howdy. Mm -hmm. Just wondering if you wanted some of the tar meat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for looking out for us. Yeah, well, a couple of those than nothing, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> he said cheers. It's always good. Cheers, mate. That way he'll have uh, have some good protein up here for the rest of his time. Bring it through that uh, staple there. Just so it brings it away from this pole a little bit. The crucial part here, right behind the horns. I have too many beers before you do this part. What's the hardest one you've ever done? That buffalo? Buffalo is pretty easy. It's big, everything's big, and it's all the smaller stuff that's the yes. I want to take the most time with that sheep, stone sheep, because you know the guys paid forty thousand dollars to kill it, so a little pressure Precision. when the hunter's looking over your shoulder. Sure. Todd yeah. teach you how to do it. Yep. This is definitely easier than the, the white tail. It's like a game of twister again. Mm -hmm. Just got done cleaning it up a little bit, scraping a lot of the head meat out. Brains and all the good stuff. Scraping her, so all the brains, all the brain surgery. We're gonna get an official measurement here. Now that we can see the very end of the horns. 13 and 7 eighths. 13 7 eighths. <clears throat> Almost a 14. Look at that mass though. God, that mass is dang. nuts. <sighs> the big boy. Todd just measured it. Um, the longest horn on there was uh, 13 and 7 eighths. So almost 14 inches long, 14 inch bull tar. That's like a huge, that's considered mega trophy. Like that'd be like a 10 pound bass basically. But one of the really cool things you could do is you can count the age of the tar by these growth rings. Well, they got these, what they call annuli. It's just like mountain sheep. Um, it's like that diff, defined ring that goes all the way around the horn, the whole horn. You see it pretty, you can see the definitive rings there. The spaces between the two, between the lines. So you start with there, one, two, three, four. It's getting thicker, five, six, 
seven, there's an eighth one here, and then what we call the lamb tip here, which is basically the first 18 months, so you've got your nine, your nine and a half. Is nine and a half a year, which technically is down here, but I kind of count backwards from from the start. Right. So technically, if you're counting front ways, you'd be 18 months, then two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half, nine and a half. So this part here, this is when they're just young and yep, probably growing still up. on mum. Yep. Yep. Pretty good. Pretty. Re That's an old animal. As far as animals go. For a tar, yeah. We um, blow that. Little hunters, you know, it's hard. They look so good from about four or five years old like, with their big manes and stuff. So a tar, uh, four, five, six years old, they, they start to look pretty good from from the ground. So a lot of those younger bulls get shot and not not a lot to get to reach this kind of age, which which is kind of one of the pluses and one of the reasons why I hunt this area. It's so thick with scrub that these older bulls get a chance to live and... Um, yeah, you just got to get it lucky and be in the right place at the right time and let one of these old boys make a mistake, which this guy hasn't done for 10 years. And yeah, not to mention all the helicopters this guy's probably dodged in his time. They get a lot of heli hunting pressure in this area. These big old boys, they kind of know the drill. And as soon as they, as soon as they hear the, the wash of that helicopter rotor, they, they head for cover and uh, yeah. <laughs> they like to play a pretty good, they wow. play a good hide and seek, so. There we go, y'all. Caping's done. I've got the skull done. All the stuff picked out of it. Lighten the load dramatically. The taste of the tar was surprisingly good. And Wendy and Todd did a great job cooking it up in the skillet. All I gotta do now is get this tar back down the mountain about seven miles or so, but the hard part is over, y'all. So we got one more thing I'm gonna show you on the next video. There's some thermal pools around here that are really neat. And then of course the journey back with all the gear. So thank you for tuning in to this Catch and Cook. Go ahead and hit the like button for the most exotic thing that I've ever eaten before. And if you guys wanna stay tuned, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the ding dongs for all the notifications. And I'll see you on the next one. Think New Zealand's gonna rear its ugly raining head again. Time for the rain cover. Mm -hmm.